Hi, I'm Abby and this is my channel and welcome to Shakespeare Week. Today I'm repping my man Macbeth on my shirt and we are going over adaptations of Shakespeare plays into movies and film um, and kind of going over some of the best ones. These movies range in when they were made from many decades ago to very recently and many of them I have seen but some of them I have not but I did my research to see which ones is kind of, in general, the ones that are considered best adaptations from his plays. So let's get started. The first one I'm going to mention was made in 1953 and is Julius Caesar. It was directed by Joseph Mansiewicz. <laughs> I don't know how to say his last name. Um, but this film, I think I've seen a scene from it, the speech from the steps is kind of a famous if you look up this movie you'll see a screenshot of it probably uh but i haven't seen this movie but it was but it was highly recommended as a good adaptation some of the stars in it are james mason lewis calham and jean guillaud i don't know how to say his last name either <laughs> The second film I'm gonna mention, it was made in 1999 and is Titus and is based off Titus Andronicus. It was directed by Julie Taymor and has stars in it as Anthony Hopkins, Jessica Lange, and Oshin Jones. I haven't seen this movie fully. I've seen parts of it. Uh, I know confirmed that I've uh, seen parts of it, but I have looked when I was researching uh, this movie they do offer like a free version of the whole movie online that you can watch on a website. I'm not exactly sure, but I will try to link it down below. And the next movie that I'm going to mention is the 1995 Richard III. It was directed by Richard Lone Crane, and it stars Ian McKellen, Maggie Smith, and Annette Bening, plus many others. <laughs> Richard III was made in 1995. I almost added in another Richard III uh, that was made in the 50s, but this one was a little more recommended. Maybe it's because it's newer, uh, but both were said to be very well done. The next adaptation I'm going to mention is the 2011 Coriolanus. I have seen clips of this. Uh, I have not seen the whole movie yet. It is directed and stars Ralph Fiennes and also Gerard Butler is in it. If you are a fan of Gladiator, <laughs> you know that, who he is. <laughs> next, I'm gonna group the next two movies in together because they are by the same director. And the director is Akira Kurosawa, I think is how you say it. Um, both of these movies are, I think, Japanese. Um, they're not English, but they're Japanese uh, takes on Shakespeare's plays. The two movies are Ran from 1985 and Throne of Blood from 1957. Ran I've heard a lot about. I really do want to see it. It's based off of King Lear and then Throne of Blood is based off Macbeth um, and both of the movies were highly spoke of when I was researching adaptations. Uh, I think there was one other movie of Akira's they talked about, um, but I don't recall it right now. But these two were ones I remember a lot, especially Ran. They talked about Ran a lot. But if you don't see Throne of Blood and you do want to see a version of Macbeth, um, Macbeth, there is one made in 2015 that's very good. I've actually seen this one. It was directed by Justin Carzell and it stars Michael Fassbender as Macbeth. This adaptation was really great. The scenery was really what got me th um, in this movie. I think they filmed in Scotland, which if you don't know, Macbeth is the Scottish play formerly known as, or not formerly, is known as, <laughs> if you are suspicious. The movie had a great like feel to it for a Macbeth film. It's not the only uh, adaptation of Macbeth that I've seen, but it's definitely probably my favorite, and I think they did a really great job on it. The next adaptation I'm gonna mention is called The Chimes at Midnight, and it was made in 1966, directed and starred by Orson Welles. Chimes of Midnight is based off of Henry IV plays. I'm not sure 
if it's part one or part two or both of them combined. I actually haven't seen this version, but Orson plays Falstaff within this movie. So I'm sure it will be pretty good. <laughs> and now we're going to talk about Kenneth Branagh for a minute because uh, I have two movies of his that I want to mention as uh, great ad adaptations even though he's done many and they are, I have seen quite a few of them and they are pretty good. Uh, there's two of them that kind of stick out to me and to most people and one of them is the 1993 version of Much Ado About Nothing. Kenneth Branagh directs and stars in it um, along with Emma Thompson Denzel Washington, Keanu Reeves, Kate Beckinsale, and many others that are very known. I have seen a couple versions of Much Ado, but this one definitely tops it. I've seen a BBC version that's pretty good. Uh, considering it, they're both the same, it's funny how you can get a different feel from each of them. But I would say Kenneth Branagh's version is very playful and hilarious, and the banter is just great even though they use the same lines in both versions. And the movie just makes you really want to visit the Italian countryside. I think that's where they filmed it. It's beautiful. Um, but it's a great version of Much Ado if you want to watch it. And the next Kenneth Branagh um, Shakespeare I'm going to mention is his 1996 Hamlet. I own this one. I've seen it. Uh, Hamlet is one of my favorite plays, or is my favorite play. And he does the whole four hour long play in this movie it is directed and stars Kenneth Branagh but also includes uh Kate Winslet, Julie Christie, and Anne Derek Jacoby I think is how you say his name but again this is a really great location in England that they filmed this at I think it's called Belheim Palace uh but it just some of the scenery in this movie let alone that it is the full four hour play um, the scenery in this movie is really great. I love the almost opening scene of the wedding and Hamlet's just there. Hamlet, you see, you get this shot of Hamlet in his full black with all the white confetti and flower petals or whatever they are falling down. <laughs> it's, I think it's a great, a great scene. And there's many more of them within the movie that are fantastic. I even know a friend who said for school she watched the movie instead of reading the play. Um, because it, he cuts no lines, so if you're looking to study Hamlet, instead of reading it or going along with it, you can read it and watch this movie because it will help the same way. <laughs> Next, I'm going to mention two more ad adaptations, which are actually the, both the same play, um, just in different times. One is the 1996 Romeo and Juliet, and then the other is Romeo and Juliet, but in 1968. The 96 version uh, stars Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes. Uh, very famous. <laughs> I feel like many people know this version of Romeo and Juliet and have seen it. I've seen it. I think it's really great. It's been a while since I've watched it, um, but it has like a Mexican Hispanic uh, vibe to it. Um, it was directed by Baz Luhrmann, I think is how you say his last name, but it's very known version of Romeo and Juliet. The 1968 version, I think I've seen parts of when I studied it in school. Uh, I think many English teachers show it when they have their students study Shakespeare and Romeo and Juliet and use the 1968 version more than the 1996 version. The 68 version was directed by Franco Zeffirelli, I think is how you say it. <laughs> so those are the adaptations I have seen or heard about that are the best and well done. I tend to once a week watch a adaptation of Shakespeare, usually on Sundays, um, on Instagram I'll post about them and you know, hashtag Shakespeare Sundays. But I know you can find a lot of them on many streaming services, especially on Amazon Prime is where I find a lot of them. There's old productions from BBC that they've done throughout the decades um, that are good. Some of them, <laughs> Some of them are actually really good. If you're wanting to try to find them, uh, you can just search Shakespeare or if you want to find a certain play. Uh, I know they have them a lot of, on Amazon Prime. There's some on like HBO or, or on like Netflix or many sites like that. You can also maybe search famous actors or 
um, directors that are known for their Shakespeare work. Uh, like, like I said, Kenneth Branagh has done a lot of them um, that are very well known and liked. Uh, Laurence Olivier is a well known for like for his Shakespeare work, but more in I think the 40s and 50s. There are a lot of productions um, made by the BBC uh, that you can search and watch. Some of them I didn't mention earlier was like the series of The Hollow Crown, uh, which focuses on the histories. I think they made it in the celebration after the Olympics in London in 2012. But really, I think the English make a lot of <laughs> adaptations whenever they feel like it, because I feel like the English make adaptations all the time, but who's really gonna stop them because they're really great at it. <laughs> if you wanna watch them along with me, you can check out when I see them. Um, on my Instagram at Abby someone with two E's at the end. Or you can check uh, some links down below. I will try to find of where they're streaming or uh, DVD versions of them. It is a really great way to get into Shakespeare if you're new to it um, without having to read because they are plays. They're meant to be seen, not technically read. And I think it can be easier for people to know what's going on if they don't understand Shakespeare's language, if they watch it instead of um, reading it. So until next time, if you want to be someone, why not be you? And I'll see you guys in the next video.